Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We are pleased to present Health, You, Me by Dr. Tumin Wang. My name is Sienna Fong, and I am the moderator for today's Across Health Talk. I am a cancer patient navigator with Asian Health Cancer Resources and Support Services at Asian Health and Service Center. Before we get started, I would like to give you a brief overview of who we are and what we do. Asian Health and Service Center in Portland, Oregon launched new services to the Asian community to address the full cancer continuum, ranging from prevention, screening, treatment, to survivorship support. Our bilingual staff and volunteers are assisting cancer patients and their family members who speak Cantonese, Mandarin, Korean, and Vietnamese. Our goal is to increase the culturally and linguistically appropriate cancer resources, educational materials, and support we provide community-based cancer patient navigation services. To learn more about the services we provide, please visit our website or contact us by email or phone. Before we get started, I, have, I also have a few housekeeping items to go over. Today's presentation will be recorded for future training purposes. Please have your camera on, but mute yourself when you are not speaking. We will also turn off audio to minimize background disturbances during the presentation. Please type any questions in the chat box. We will collect the questions and have a Q&A at the end of the presentation. Today's presentation will be uploaded to AHSC YouTube channel. As a side note, our presentation is scheduled to run until 1130. To improve our health talk, please complete Providence post-evaluation survey at the end. We value your comment and feedback. The link will be in the chat box at the end of the presentation. We are honored to have Dr. Tsumi Wen from Providence Integrative Medicine. Dr. Tsumi Wen is a naturopathic physician and licensed acupuncturist in the state of Oregon. Dr. Wang, practices in the art of integrative naturopathic and Chinese medicine to provide services to people who would like to maintain balance and health uh, physically and mentally via herbalism, acupuncture, homeopathy, and diet and lifestyle. Dr. Wang has strong interest in classical herbal formula based on Shang Han Lun and Jin Gui Yao Lu and the five elements acupuncture to treat the underlying patterns. She engages in ongoing spiritual practice to cultivate self in order to fully experience and live in the moment, as well as to continue on the path to purpose and meaning. Dr. Wang prides herself in being easy to work with. She appreciates being part of the team and loves interacting with and observing people. Dr. Wang works with her patients to support them on the journey towards health. Please welcome Dr. Tsumi Wang. Hello, everyone. My name is Tsuming Wen, and then I'm a licensed naturopathic physician and acupuncturist. I work for Providence Integrative Medicine, part of Cancer Center. Um, first of all, thank you for spending your time with me to let me do this presentation and share with you all with my knowledge. Today, my topic is health, you and me. So, health, you and me. It is not a noun or adjective, it is a verb. It is a movement and action, a living, a living word. So today's topic will go through what is health, how to be healthy, what is integrative medicine, our providers. And lastly, uh, I will have the Q&A session. So I tend to get nervous a little bit. So if I start talking too fast, someone please let me know. One of the moderator, okay? So first of all, what is health? For well, some people, they might think, well, if I don't have any pain, then that's health. For some people, they might say, if I don't have any disease, then that's health. Some other people might say, well, if I don't go to hospital, then that's health. And then there are some other people say, if I, I don't take any kind of pills or supplements, then that's health. Then a portion of people will say, if I feel good, then that's health. Some people might say, if I sleep like a baby, then that's health. We all have different definitions. What's yours? I want to invite you to pause for a few seconds to think about 
what's your definition of health? So speaking of definition, I look up the dictionary to just look at the word health. So the English word health comes from the old English word health, meaning wholeness, being whole, sound or well. From WHO World Health Organization, they define health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely just the absence of disease or infirmity. I don't know how many people how many people heard about this definition, but this definition from WHO has not changed since 1948. Well, do you want to be healthy? I hope you all want to be healthy and then saying yes or nodding your head. Otherwise, my presentation will be ended here. Here's a cartoon to share with you all. I don't know what I want, but I'm pretty sure I won't be happy until I get it. Today, I'm here to share with you what is my definition as a naturopathic physician of health. This is an analogy a lot of time I use clinically with my patient. So I would say health is like a three-leg stool. For these three legs, they're equally important. You cannot have one leg longer or shorter and trying to balance that chair. It won't be balanced. Those three legs include physical body, mental, emotional body, and spiritual body. I call this foundation. So to have solid foundation, meaning you have good health, then we can have that big smile to enjoying our life. Today, I'm gonna go through those three legs, talking about physical body, mental, emotional body, and spiritual body. Let's start from physical body. This is another example I share with my patient a lot. I would say physical body is like a car. So when you look on the road, you will see different brands of the cars, just like human body, we have different genes. For the car to be able to move, you need to pump gas. So same thing, for our physical body, we need to eat food, have different diets. There are some fuel is better, some fuel is not that good, but then also there's, a, I, there's something about ideal and appropriate. If it's a diesel car, you're not gonna pump like regular or premium. Another thing is how do you drive it is also important. You can have two exactly same brand of car, you pump the same gas, but then one car might, goes to the, might go to the maintenance or repair center more often or break down more often. It's because how do you drive it? Same thing for our physical body. What's your habit that also play a role? Typically, when I share this with my patient, the next question they ask me is, so how do we maintain a healthy physical body? I hope you are also thinking about that question as well. Here is an answer I talk to my patient. I, I give them um, a pro so maintaining a healthy physical body is to have appropriate lifestyle, which equals appropriate diet, appropriate elimination, appropriate sleep, and appropriate movement. You will notice me that I keep saying appropriate. I don't necessarily use normal. It's because a lot of time when I ask patient questions like, oh, what's your bowel movement like? They might say my bowel movement is normal, regular. And then when I ask more detailed question like, hey, so what does that mean? Like how many times a day? They might say I go maybe every two to three days. So for them, that's normal, but it's not necessarily appropriate. This is not, not about good or bad, it's about what is appropriate. So today I wanna share with you all as well, what is appropriate lifestyle? And again, this is a general talk. My goal is trying to help general population knowing this general appropriate lifestyle to know how to kind of assess whether they are on a good foundation, whether they need to reach out for more resource or help. So appropriate diet. There is no one diet fits all. You are what you eat and what you absorb. This part for the diet, I will uh, have more in the upcoming slides. So I'm going to move on to talk about appropriate elimination. What does that mean? So we should have daily bowel movement. It could be anywhere from one to two times a day. 
three times a day is okay. And then easy to start and finish. You also feel complete. Another elimination is smooth urination. Same thing, easy to start and finish, and you feel complete. Well, how often is normal? So this is a, a definition I use from Chinese medicine. If you drink one cup of water, which is eight ounce, how long it takes you to sense that you need to go to use the bathroom, whether you have the access or not? Because sometimes nowadays um, we will get so busy and we don't necessarily you know, use the bathroom when we even sense the in sense we need to pee. So usually I make sure I ask my patient, well, how long it takes you, whether whether you are, you have the access or not. If it's thirty less than thirty minutes, that's kind of too often. If it's anywhere thirty to sixty minutes, that's still on the frequent side, but not as often as every thirty minutes. If we drink eight ounces of water, around an hour, that's more what I would call smooth urination on top of easy to start and finish and feel complete. Lastly, we have another elimination is sweat. So this is where I typically emphasize, typically emphasize with my patient is for the sweat, really we should be aiming thin layer, not just dripping a bunch of it. So next one I'm gonna talk about is appropriate sleep. What does that mean appropriate is you are able to fall asleep within 30 minutes. And, and this is when you're not using anything, like not taking any supplements, just naturally fall asleep within 30 minutes. And you sleep throughout the night. Usually when I say this clinically, all my patients, most of my patients will be like, no, that doesn't happen to me. I get up in the middle of the night to pee. So here's what I will usually answer is, if you didn't drink a bunch of water right before bedtime, you should be able to sleep through the night because evolution wise, you know, sleep is more important to rather than get, get, get up in the middle of the night to pee. So that's why we have bladder. We should be able to hold the urine if you don't drink a bunch of water before bedtime. You should be able to sleep throughout the night because that's when we rejuvenate, we have the rest. The next one is appropriate movement. So movement can be movement and or exercise. So here I usually share with patients like the goal of a appropriate movement is to have thin layer of sweat and moderate intensity exercise. To be able to know whether it's moderate intensity exercise for you, we need to know how to calculate maximum heart rate. So for the maximum heart rate, it is 220 minus your age. So if you do an exercise or a movement, it makes your heart rate between 64% and 74, 76% of maximum heart rate, then that's moderate intensity for you. Each person is different. Here's an example. Say if you are age 50, your maximum heart rate MHR will be 220 minus 50, which is 170. And then if you do an exercise or movement, make your heart rate between 64 to 76% of MHR, then that's moderate intensity for you. So here we go. Is if you times 0 0.64 and 0 0.76, you get the heart rate, 108.8 beats per minute and 129.2 beats per minute. So if you are doing any exercise or movement makes your heart rate in between 108 to 129, then that's moderate for you, moderate intensity for you. But for the appropriate movement, it means you need to hit two goals. One is a thin layer of sweat. The other one is the moderate intensity. So thanks to the technology, a lot of us nowadays wear like smartwatch or Fitbit, so then you can you can calculate it. Even if you don't have it, just in, simply with the watch, you should be able to feel your pulse and then calculate it. Um, the reason I use this is because a lot of the time patients will be like, well, I like to exercise, but then it make me, like either I don't know whether it's like appropriate or like it's too much or not. And this is where I encourage patients to start from first. 
because everybody starts from a different starting point. Some people, even brisk walking might be too much for them. They might be already sweating a lot or the heart rate might be already outside of moderate intensity heart rate. So another, now the next thing is the diet because I didn't talk to uh, a lot about the diet while I'm going through the appropriate lifestyle because there, there is more to talk about. First thing I usually share with patients is general recommendation. Remember I talk about the physical body like a car? Here is another time I will use examples to talk about general diet. When we first learn how to drive the car and then finally drive the car on the road, the most important thing is to know how to read the traffic light, follow the traffic light. So I'm gonna use the example here. So when you see red light, that means you need to stop, don't keep driving. When you see green light, that means you can keep going, go ahead. And when you see yellow, that means caution. Same thing for the physical body when you are eating, when you are eating food and having diet is for red light is a stop eating chemicals, toxins, artificial stuff. So general recommendation make, make sense. When you have a green light, that means you can eat more, go ahead. Eat like a rainbow, different colors, varieties, in season, local, natural or organic grown. For the yellow light, when we're, we all know when we're driving is like when you see yellow, that, that means be cautious. It doesn't always mean you can keep going and it doesn't always mean you have to stop because being cautious, sometimes there are time that you is more dangerous to stop when you see the yellow light. I'm pretty sure we all have that kind of experience. So that means when it comes to diet, moderation is the key. Try to minimize or avoid sugar, processed food, and refined carbohydrate. Why I say this is just cautious is because there are, time, I, like, there are times we will attend social events and then maybe there's a birthday party. There's no way you don't eat sugar or processed food or refined carbohydrate. Um, it's okay to eat it. Mo that's why I say moderate, moderation is the key. Because the more important, the most important thing is that most of the time you eat healthy. So when the time comes that you have to eat quote unquote less healthy food for your physical body, you don't necessarily have huge physical symptoms because most of the time you eat pretty healthy. So your body is able to maintain and able to deal with those, those kind of inflammation suddenly. And I also tell all my patients, I don't eat perfectly either. There are times I eat my emotions, so I definitely don't eat perfectly. What I tell patients is moderation is the key. And um, I like to talk about this general recommendation is because it's more important to know the content, like how to eat healthy, rather than just saying eat this diet, rather than just saying this diet name. Because there are a lot of times clinically when I uh, see patients, if I ask them like, hey, what do you eat for for food, like for your diet? They'll tell me, oh, I eat paleo, I eat gluten-free, or I do Mediterranean, I'm vegetarian. A lot of my new patients for their first follow-up, I ask them to do pictures, like take picture of their food for seven days, a typical week, and come back in, then I will review the, the, the picture together. A lot of time I notice the content is not necessary what they say. So through this practice, I realize it's more important to help my patient to understand what's the general recommendation rather than just tell them what to eat, what kind of diet. So once we know the general recommendation for the diet, the second thing I share with patients a lot is focus on your play portion. What's the guideline? From the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, they used to use um, pyramids. So goodbye, my pyramid, they don't use this anymore. The new one is hello, my plate. And then um, I'm gonna kind of walk through like what's the difference between these two, even though we don't use the pyramid anymore. So you can see at the bottom, the most of the food category is bread, cereal, rice, and pasta. And the next one is the vegetable, and then fruit, then dairy, then the poetry, 
and meat, and up here is the uh, the fats, oil, and sweet. So we realize this is not the best way to practice. That's why <laughs> goodbye pyramid and hello my place. So now this is a little bit easy. I was a much much easier to understand the portion size. So for the new guideline from the uh, USDA is half of the play. These half a little bit more than half should come from should come from vegetables, and then a little bit less than half is fruit. On this half, a little bit over half is grains, and then a little bit less than half is protein. Here also has have uh have dairies here um with the hello my play there are, after the new guideline there are a lot of organization institute use the my play idea and then kind of do modification to give a another guideline the one i like the most within all this is uh from harford so i'm gonna share that as well so you can see what's the difference so again left hand side is the hello my play uh my play from the USDA, and then the right hand side is the from Harvard. So you can see that definitely for this one, uh, it has more information, and there are some changes. Let's take a look of the play. So on this half, you can notice they really want you to eat more vegetable, and then the fruit size is smaller. And then on the this half, they emphasize on healthy protein, not just protein, and then also whole grains instead of just grains. And then for the this part, it doesn't say dairy, it just says water. And then they talk about healthy oils instead of dairy. So they will say here, use healthy oil like olive or and the canola oil for cooking and salad. So from the, the one from Harvard, they definitely kind of tell you like what to know in each category. Like say for the vegetable, the more is better, the, for, the more variety is better. And then they also mention like potatoes and French fries don't count. And then on the healthy protein, they also talk about choose fish, poultry, beans, and nuts. It's not just like animal product. Limit red meat and cheese, avoid bacon, cold cuts, and other processed meats. Also, another important thing here, besides the eating play, they also mention about stay active. So here is what I usually share with my patient uh, in doing a visit is this is if this is the play half of it need to come from vegetable i typically don't say much about fruit and i'll explain why the next one here i would say a quarter is coming from fish animal product or non-animal product and then the whole grains so then in summary i tell them okay half of your plate for each meal it need to be non-starchy vegetable if you eat anything starchy vegetable it counts more on this side for the whole grains so a quarter is a quarter of your plate should be coming from whole grains or starchy foods another quarter should come from lean protein the reason i don't i don't tell my patient to eat vegetable and fruit in this half is because a lot of time i notice when i review all the pictures they end up eating more fruit than vegetable. And even if they know that uh, they should eat more vegetable. So just because nowadays we just don't eat, eat enough vegetables. So this is why I tell my patient, you can eat fruit, only eat fruit after you finish your plate. So you know you have all the important uh, nutrients first. And if you still feel like you have stomach, have the space to eat fruit, then you can do that. Because a lot of time what people do is they will eat carbs or fruit first or protein. Then by the end of it, they couldn't really eat much vegetables. So the, the besides the play portion, it's also important to know, start from your vegetable first, then protein, and then, and then the whole grains. If you still have space, then you can eat uh, fruit. Now, after introducing the play portion, the next thing is about play size. What kind of play size we are talking about? So for play size, in this picture, they have exactly the same amount of food. It's just different play size. They all have three ounces of tuna, one cup of carrots, half cup of wild rice. And then as you can see, the different, different play does make the food content look, amount look differently. The, play size I'm talking about is 11 inches. 
um, there are times with patients, they have other underlying digestion issues, so they will not be able to eat 11 inches. Then I will have them start from the 8.5 inches and then move on to 10. Then eventually, hopefully, they can move on to the 11 inches. So again, back to moderation is the key. Here is a cartoon to share with you all. America adapt the new USDA nutrition guideline, top view and side view. So obviously, this is not the side view. I want anyone to do it. So moderation is the key. And then usually when I have my patient take pictures for me, I told them to do a top view and then a side view because I want to see the amount, the container. The next general guideline for the diet is read food labels before purchases. So this is also another thing important that I usually share with patients because if, if we all know how to read the food label and also have the habit to read it before you purchase something, then you are not gonna buy all the less healthy food or maybe bad food and bring them home. Because once it's home, a lot of time we will feel like, oh, we need to finish up. We don't wanna throw it away, those kind of things. So I think it's really important to, ha to have the habit to read the food labels before purchases. Um, another thing for me, personal experience is that every time if I want to eat snacks or like I just have a bad day eating my emotions, then I'll go to the supermarket and I really want to buy a snack. But then I always tell me, myself, it's okay to buy the snack as long as I read the label. So then I'll be like reading the label. My husband usually just tease me because he's like, just grab one and go because he knows I will be like standing in front of the, the snack rack like for 20 minutes and I still didn't pick any because I'm like, oh my God, this is how much of added sugar? So another, another thing I share with my patient is it's not, you cannot eat junk food. It's more like besides moderation. Another thing I talk to my patient is like, you can eat all the junk food you want as long as you make it. Because when we make it, a lot of times, like I love gummy bears. So, so I will, I don't buy the gummy bears, but then I will, I will, because I see the, the package and I'm like, oh, too much sugar. So then I'll make my own one because I'm like, well, you know, if I make my own gummy bear, I can control how much sugar I want to put in. So I will do my own gummy bear. So same thing for patients. I say, you can, if there's certain sweets you really like, learn how to do it. You can make, um, make your own and then you can control what kind of ingredient, how much, how much sugar you want to put in. So without further ado, this is how to read food label. So on the left hand side, you can see the food label. The first step is to start with the serving size, which you can see here. Serving size means, means one serving size in this label is two thirds of cups, which is 55 grams. Usually above it, it will tell you how many servings in total for this package. So for this one, we have eight servings per container. The second thing is check out the calories and really is also checking out other stuff. So here, these nutrients or calories, the amount is based on one serving only. So the third step is let the percentage daily value be your guide. So percentage daily value is here. So what is that? So basically, um, each nutrient is based on 100% of the daily requirement or allowance for that nutrient. And it's based on a 2000 calorie diet. So the percentage daily value helps you to determine if a serving of a food is high or low in a certain nutrient. So what is high, what is low? So low is 5% or less. So when you look here, daily percentage, if it's five, less than 5%, that's low. So M low in saturated fat, trans fat will be 0%, cholesterol and sugar and sodium. And I will spend a little bit more time talking about sugar. And um, next one is high is 20% means high, 20% or more means high. M high in vitamins, mineral and fiber. Lastly, but not the least is to check the ingredient list. So here are two labels about the, what, about the sugar. So one is the plain, on the left-hand side is plain yogurt. On the right-hand side is fruit-flavored yogurt. 
and you can see, okay, both does don't have the trans fat, which is good. But for the sugar part, you can notice for the plain yogurt is 10 grams. For the, uh, for the fruit yogurt is 44 grams. Clinically, a lot of time my patient told me like, but I just really like the flavor one. So this is what I tell them. Well, do the plain yogurt and add the actual, a lot of the fruit, you can just do the actual fresh fruit instead of the fruit sugar one. Um, also, if you look at the ingredients, you can see for the plain yogurt, it doesn't contain any added sugar. For the fruit yogurt, you, you will see there's the, the ingredient here, there's a, you, you added sugar, which is a high fructose corn syrup. Why is it important to read the ingredient? It's because for the ingredient, they list the, list the most ingredient to the least. So in, for example, in this label, the top three ingredient for this package is corn flour, sugar, and peanut butter. So it's also important to just say that when you're eating a food, like what exactly the top five ingredients you're getting from the package. Another thing is about sugar. So FDA had a new regulation, I believe it's starting in 2018. Um, all the manufacturers are required to put added sugar. In the past, like the previous yogurt one, it, did, it just says total sugar. It didn't tell you added sugar, but now, FDA has required manufacturer need to tell, um, you know, the customers like how many added sugar in this package. So total sugar here is 12 grams. And these 12 grams of sugar has 10 grams of added sugar, which means two grams are from like the full ingredient, but they add extra, they just dump sugar in. So another thing for the food label I share with my patient is make sure is zero added sugar, okay? So here, if if we, let's pretend here it says zero added sugar. And when once you know this is zero added sugar, the next thing to look is total sugar. So if here is zero and then the total sugar is 12, I tell a patient the next thing to check is make sure this is f less than 5%. So how do you do the math? It's like you do 12 divided by one serving because remember this is based on one serving so one serving is 55 grams and then the total sugar if this is already zero so first step is zero added sugar and then if this is zero and the total sugar is 12 then you will see it, it contains 21.8 percent of sugar which is a lot so then i always tell my patient hey you need to do the calculation and why why here for the sugar it doesn't have a daily value some of the nutrients they don't have it is because like for the for example for the trans fat you don't have the daily value is because we don't recommend to eat it and then another thing for total sugar we don't have a de uh, the daily value is because we never had to establish like how much sugar a person can eat and then so i usually just tell my patient just aim low and then make sure there's no added sugar before you before you do the total sugar and that's why a lot of Time, I tell people that like, you have to kind of calculate it because there is no daily daily value for you to uh, as a guideline. And then for protein, usually we don't have the daily value. It's because we tend to eat more than what we eat, so then we they they just don't put any daily value there anymore. Another thing for the percentage daily value is this is just per serving size. So say one serving of the fat is 18%. If you eat two serving, then you are eating 36%. So remember we talk about like these percentages based on a 2000 calorie diet. So if you eat a whole 100% of the fat, then that's like 2,000 calories there. And then, so if you eat one serving, that's 18%. Then if you eat two serving, that's 36%. And that's not counting anything else. So that's also another thing that's important besides the serving size. How many servings in one package is also important. So I have talked the first leg, physical body. Um, it's like a car, I give that example. And then to maintain the healthy, physical body is you need to have like appropriate lifestyle and appropriate diet, appropriate elimination, appropriate movement and appropriate sleep. And then for the diet, we talk about three things. The first thing is like the general recommendation is the traffic light. 
The second thing is focus on your play portion. The third thing is remember to eat the uh, to read the food label before you purchase the food the, the product. Now we will move to the next. Have you seen these drivers? They don't seem too happy. Have you seen someone who has the best car but still not happy? So you can have perfect, fine physical body, healthy physical body, but you're still not happy. And that can have an impact in the long run for your physical body. That means that like originally your physical body doesn't have problems. It become it start having problems because the mental emotional body is not balanced, not healthy. Attitude. So what counts of mental emotional is like your attitude. What's the is it positive? Is it negative? These have this has an impact on the immune system, inflammation, and DNA DNA mutation. How to keep our mental emotional body healthy? Another thing is like what's your stress management? A lot of time my patient will tell me because I'll ask them like, hey, what's your stress management? They will tell me, oh, I exercise. So here I usually share with patients, I say exercise is good because it helps us to feel better. Like, you know, also like it release the end of and you feel good, that's for sure. But then it's not necessary a stress management because it's not like doing the exercise, you will thinking, thinking how to face or deal with your stressor. So it's not necessary that stress is still there. That stress is there, it's still not being dealt with. So I always encourage patients to think about like what's the other stress management that will help you to actually face your stress and then um, deal with it. How's, what's your self-care? Self-care has a huge impact on mental, emotional body as well. And also what's your support system? So this is a article from New York Times in 2016. This is pre-pandemic and I haven't checked after pandemic. But even before pandemic, they are already saying loneliness and isolation is killing us. So here is the article. Individuals with less social connection have disrupted sleep pattern, altered immune system, and more inflammation and higher level of stress hormone. It also mentioned another analysis that pulled data from 70 studies and 3.4 million people found that socially isolated individuals, they had 30% of higher risk of dying in the next seven years. And this effect was largest in the middle age. It also accelerated cognitive decline in older adults and isolated individuals are twice as likely to die prematurely as those with more robust social interactions. And also these effects start early. Socially isolated children have significantly poorer health 20 years later, even after controlling for other factors. All told, loneliness is as important a risk factor for early death as obesity and smoking. So health is like a three-leg stool. You need those three legs equally stable and then they are both, they're all important. There's no one is more important than the other. It include physical body, mental, emotional body, spiritual body. This is the foundation. To have a good foundation, we can live our life with that big smile. So the last one I haven't talked about is spiritual body. So this one, I always joke about, this one is easy for me because we all need to find our own path. I cannot find it for you. So when I share with patients, I'm like, well, you know, I cannot find it for you, but then you need, we all need to think about like, what do we want for our spiritual body? Here is a, a quote to share with you. People take different roads seeking fulfillment and happiness. Just because they are not on your road doesn't mean they have gotten lost. This is from Dalai Lama. So may you all find your path. So I know this can be overwhelming, so let us help you. Earlier I mentioned I work, uh, I'm a naturopathic physician. So a lot of time patient will ask me, what, what is naturopathic medicine? So it's a distinct system of medicine based on naturopathic philosophy and principles. And here is the philosophy. First, do no harm, just like all other healthcare providers. The healing power of nature 
treat the whole person, identify and treat the cause. Doctor as teacher, prevention. And so this is the principle and philosophy for naturopathic medicine. And this is the therapeutic order for naturopathic medicine, meaning that it's a guideline how do we approach to help people. So uh, the foundation is establish the foundation for optimal health. And this is why I today this general talk is really more focused on the foundation part because this is the determinants of health. The next step is stimulate self-healing and then support and restore weakened system. Then address physical alignment, natural, natural symptom relief, and synthetic symptom relief and high force interventions. So a lot of I tell people like typically after here, after the support and restore weak, weakened system, this is more about pathology. So that's why the tool is a little bit more intense. Because here, before here, we're still talking about physiology, and that's different. Physiology is more like, like what we're supposed to have. How can we support it to make our body more adaptable? Because our body is very smart. Like when we have a low blood sugar, we feel hungry, and then we eat. Like our body know what to do to maintain that balance. But that's under the physiology. A lot of time when you are past the physiology and going to the pathology, you need a stronger stronger tools so what is a naturopathic physician so it's an expert in natural medicine they employs an approach that views the body as an integra integrated whole searches for an underlying cause of disease or obstacles to cure utilize hierarchy of therapeutic therapeutics from least to the most invasive as appropriate emphasize patient education as a primary objective and then they're good at health promotion, wellness, disease prevention, and disease management. The next one I want to talk about is Chinese medicine and acupuncture. To talk about Chinese medicine, um, I usually start with like, sharing the philosophy. And then to share the philosophy of the Chinese medicine, it's like Chinese medicine is like, you know, there's kind of in general West and East, West medicine and East medicine. So Chinese medicine is a part of the East medicine. To know the philosophy, I like to start from the West medicine first. So for West medicine, we feel body as a machine. So health means absence of disease and functioning within norm normative parameters. So the online of the medicine will be like war on disease with doctor as general, disease as enemy, and patient as occupied territory. The goal is to eradicate symptoms and maximize performance. So this is for West medicine. For Chinese medicine, which is part of East medicine, they see the body as garden. Healthy means integrity, adaptability, continuity, and the outlook of medicine is cultivate health with doctor and patient in partnership to improve ecological conditions. Goal is to enhance self-regulatory capacity. You can see the difference. Here, I always emphasize, this is very important. This now will now one is better or more superior or one is more inferior there's no right or wrong both are important you don't it's not like i must only choose one system both are important it depends on what's the situation say if today you you have cancer then that's you know we need to use the west medicine they have all these tools the imaging the labs to really see how bad the pathology has gone and then they have the tool for the treatment to quickly control it but then also at the same time when you go for a battle you you still after the battle is over you still need to take care of the wounded and then the afterwards and then this is where the east medicine and to be honest, natural medicine, natural medicine is also part of this idea, this philosophy, is to help to re restore, to recover. So it's different situation, both are important. It's not one is better than the other. Acupuncture involves placing things, sterile, surgical, stainless steel needles into the skin, has been practiced for 3,000 to 5,000 years. Acupuncture can help a lot of stuff, and I just list some of them here. 
So pain is the most well-known one, and nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite, fatigue, peripheral neuropathy, sleep, mood, and then breathing, and then the list goes on and on. But wait, it is integrative medicine clinic. So what is integrative medicine? It combines the best of non-traditional care with mainstream traditional therapies. It uses therapies with evidence when available for benefit and safety. It focuses on the whole person and then more time and greater patient involvement in the decision making. The service typically include natural naturopathy, Chinese medicine, chiropractor, acupuncture, massage therapy, and nutrition consultation. So integrative medicine is like team medicine. Together, everyone achieves more. Integrative medicine makes use of all appropriate therapeutic approach, healthcare professionals and disciplines to achieve optimal health and healing. Earlier, I mentioned I work for Providence Integrative Medicine Clinic. We have two locations, one over the east, one over the west. For the east side, we are located in the northeast Gleason, Street and then for the West is over St. Vincent in Beaverton area. The service we provide, we have acupuncture, naturopathic medicine, chiropractic medicine, therapeutic massage, dietary counseling, and here's the website link, or you can simply just search it Providence Integrative Medicine. On the left hand side, you can see our provider, and then we have naturopaths, acupuncturists, chiropractor, and massage therapists. And then on the right hand side, again, is about what service we provide to have a holistic approach for, to the Medicare, medical care. So once again, today, I talk about the three legs and then to have that solid foundation so we can all have the big smile to live our life. And you are the driver. You need to have the intent and initiation. If uh, if you don't want if you if you are not the driver or you don't wanna you don't have that motivation, it's very hard for us to help you because we can have all these tools. But the most important thing is you have to be the driver, and this can be overwhelming. That's why we are here. So if you need to make appointment, you know where to find us. And here's another quote to share with everyone: When you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you to achieve you to achieve it and then help you and me again health is not a noun or adjective it's a it is a verb it is a movement and action a living word thank you and then hopefully i didn't talk too fast or too slow and now if you have any questions please let me know and i will give the time to the moderator sienna right